guys <laughs> welcome back to a new video am i too far away wait let's get a bit more cozy i'm here to be talking about my titties if i'm very out of breath in this video it's because i literally am they're still very tight on my chest and it's kind of hard to breathe so excuse that i might be kind of huffing and puffing throughout this video i also can't be doing my hair so i literally am just wearing a wig with a hat you don't want to look underneath this because it looks so bad but that's okay i wanted to do a q a on my breast augmentation and I decided to do it quite soon after my surgery because I really wanted to kind of dive deeper into the first week, I guess. I Today's day five, I think. It's a Tuesday and I got it done Thursday last week. I know with me, like if I wait too long, I'm gonna kind of forget about a lot of things. I am answering a bunch of questions for you today and then I'm gonna be back probably like three months from now to do another update on how the healing has been um, over that like three month period and then I guess kind of the end result. I made myself some coffee, get yourself some coffee too because I'm gonna be talking a lot and this might end up being a very long video. I'm gonna try to get comfortable. I need some pillows in my back. Ow, I can't do that. I have to like use my legs to push myself up because I can't really use my arms. Get a blanket, get comfy. I'm already sweating. I'm gonna take off my jacket because I'm sweating so bad. You can kind of see my tatas. This is what they're like right now. They're very swollen and very tight. I mean, I'm gonna get into everything, but this is me right now. So before we get into the questions, I quickly want to mention today's sponsor, which is Lalo. Lalo is a brand that makes sex toys. I've mentioned them in a video before. Um, I think they're an amazing brand for beginners, but also for people that are a bit more advanced when it comes to using sex toys. Um, their website is very informative, which is probably my favorite thing about them. Every toy has like a full on description, how to use, how to clean, which is probably like the most important when it comes to using sex toys. I am very pro masturbation, especially for women. I think it's very important to open up the conversation and normalize it because it's just so important to know your body and um, be comfortable with your body so today i'm showing you guys the mia 2 which i think is an amazing toy for everyone um it's great for beginners but it's also just great for when you're like traveling when you want it to be kind of a bit more discreet so it's basically in a shape of a lipstick and you charge it by an usb so you can literally pop this into your computer to charge it and I mean, no one will really know that this is a vibrator unless they like really look close because it does have like an on and off button. But I think this one is great for traveling. Like I said, it's very small. It can fit into your purse. It's also great if maybe your parents aren't very open about talking about masturbation or you having any sex toys if you want to hide it. And they probably won't even be able to find it. Like it's so small, it's so easy to hide. It comes with a little baggie, which you can keep it in. And then it also comes with um, a personal moisturizer, which you can use. It's glycerin free and paraben free. The Mia 2 is also waterproof and it's body safe. It's made from body safe materials. So if you want to check out Lalo, I will have a link down below. And let's go ahead and get into these questions, y'all. I'm excited to answer these for you because I've had so many DMs, so many people asking me, and it's just too much to answer. And I was like, I'm just gonna do a video, get it all out there. You know, I'm always very open about getting things done. I've never gotten plastic surgery before, but I have gotten filler before, which I've been open about. And I think that with something this drastic, like it's not something I can hide or like lie about. And I also just don't feel the need to. Um, you know, I feel like if I were to be watching myself, I would appreciate 
um, just a very open and transparent video like this where I just lay it all out there. Just like the reality of getting something done. Um, and this is not a video to necessarily promote getting plastic surgery. I've never been against it. I think if you want to change something and you can do it um, safely and you have done your research, um, go for it, you know, as long as you don't go too extreme, I guess. Getting my boobs done was something that I've wanted for a while and I knew from the start when I'm getting this done, I'm going to be open about it. I'm going to be talking and vlogging and doing all of that. Let me just go ahead and get into the questions. So I put them in three categories because I got literally so many. So I have before surgery, surgery day, and then days after surgery. So I'm just going to get started with the before surgery questions and then we'll move on and go from there. We're going to try to answer each question quite just like direct and not too detailed because if I do that, this video is going to be literally an hour long. So some questions I might go into a bit deeper but um okay so let's get started what was the reason you wanted to get implants so i've always had smaller boobs and i was never necessarily like insecure about them to the point where i would just like have to wear push-up bras all the time like when i was younger i would wear push-up bras all the time like i would literally sleep in them and then i got to a point where i was like fuck bras like i was all like free the nipple and i was very just like I was fine with my boobs. A little over a year ago, I was still on the pill, and the pill made my boobs a bit bigger. Um, so at the time, I was like kind of fine with them. Like I didn't mind the size. I feel like I was probably like a small C, I think, like maybe 32 C. Then when I got off the pill, I lost weight and I also lost my boobs. I never necessarily hated them, but I've just always really wanted big boobs. And I got to a point where I was like, I can afford getting them done. Um, I had a friend who got hers done so I kind of got like the whole experience and I saw how that was and I was like maybe I'm just gonna get it done like might as well for a while I was like let me wait until I have kids but then I was like it's gonna take so long before I have kids and I kind of just want to have them now and enjoy them and you know have this like extra boost of confidence that um, I, I was still confident before I just knew that this was a part of my body that I really wanted to change and that could um, just give me that little extra boost, I guess. I love small boobs. I think small boobs are great. They look amazing on everyone. I don't, like when I look at other people, I never really think like, oh, her boobs are too small. Like I, I think every boob size looks great on everyone. But for me personally, having smaller boobs always kind of made me feel a little less, maybe a little less feminine or like, um, and I'm not trying to like, put it out there saying that having small boobs isn't feminine or makes you less of a woman which is like obviously not true but I'm just trying to kind of bring you into my perspective and like how I looked at my body it was definitely a part of my body that I didn't like as much um also when having sex like I never really wanted to do anything with my chest like I'd rather keep my shirt on um again I, I'm not I didn't get it done or like other people I definitely got it done for myself but it's like obviously when you're having sex and you feel kind of insecure and like not very sexy on top that's like a feeling within yourself that I just hated and I didn't want that yeah, I guess like whenever I looked at myself in the mirror naked I kind of saw myself more as a like a girl and not as much as a woman maybe um and I feel like I yeah I just kind of wanted to have them to feel a bit more like a woman and feel like my body looked a bit more mature maybe I don't know um, again I, I'm, I really don't want this to come across the wrong way like I don't want people to take it as oh like having small boobs make you makes you less of a woman or anything but that's just kind of how I felt about myself and I just want to I just want to try and be as transparent as possible um, and yeah so that's kind of how I felt about that you can still look really fucking good with small boobs and you you're totally still a woman and all of that it's just kind of how i felt within myself what clinic and doctor did you go to so i went to blooming plastic surgery um my doctor i'll put his name on the screen it's dutch so i feel like if i pronounce it people are really not gonna understand it another question was what made you, what made you choose the doctor you went to like i said i had a friend who got her boobs done and i just kind of saw that whole experience and i really i went to like the consultations with her as well 
and I really liked him so I was like I think I just want him to do mine as well so I booked a consultation with him that was last year um, and I just felt like he really understood what I was trying to go for I feel like we were on the same page then COVID happened I was supposed to get my boobs done last year but COVID happened so they stopped doing surgeries um, so I went back in August and I decided to just stick with him because I really trusted him and I liked him and um, I could have totally gone and went to different surgeons and did a couple different consultations which I would recommend like especially if you don't know anyone yet that has gotten something done or you haven't gotten a recommendation but for me personally he just felt good I trusted him and I was like this is I just want him to do it which size were you before one boob was definitely a 32b I think the other one was probably like a 32a maybe kind of like in between I feel like it was never fully a 32a but it was also never like a 32b so it was kind of like in between which implant and cc did you get i have my little little card here so i got 410 cc i did get silicone implants i think the brand is your euro silicone nagore i don't know i'll put it on the screen this is what my card says i know that a lot of people like really researched every single like implant and all of that and I kind of did but I also kind of just trusted my doctor I basically just said to him like I don't want round implants um, because I don't want too much volume at the top I just don't think that will look good on me so I knew from the start I wanted like a droplet shape I'm not sure if that's the actual like name for it we just kind of did some measurements and I went in and just like put on a bra and fit like a few sizes I'll put a video on the screen I still have it um in august i went and did a fitting and we kind of just ended up going for 410 um which is quite a, it's quite big but since it's droplet shape like most of the volume is at the bottom which is what i wanted another question was how did you decide the best size for you so like i said we did a fitting and i also just had a lot of inspo photos which was another question did you show insta photos yes i did um i would totally suggest doing that whenever you see someone online or whatever who has boobs that you're like that's what i want screenshot it and save it i had a bunch of them and i'm not going to show them because i feel like some some of them are just like random people i saw online it's kind of like invasive if i put their boobs out there but most of them were basically just very a lot of volume at the bottom quite wide quite big definitely i don't know how else to really explain it but i just showed him all of that we did a fitting and then we ended up choosing this and he basically just said like which brands and like type of implants were his favorites and that he felt like would be the best for um for me personally and i just trusted him with that i didn't really tell him a specific brand or type of implant that i wanted because i was like he's the professional he's done this so many times and i have done my research but i'm not educated enough to tell him what to put in my body so I just kind of let him choose and this is what I got. How did you mentally prepare yourself for the procedure? Were you scared? I wasn't really scared. I'm a very, like, I don't really get scared for stuff like that anyways. And I've gone surgery before, not plastic surgery, but I've had surgery three times before. So getting surgery for me wasn't really a scary thing. I'm quite used to it almost. So yeah, I wasn't really scared. I didn't really mentally prepare myself because i was just like so ready i was more excited than scared really did you consider doing fat transfer instead um fat transfer i'm pretty sure is not permanent um and especially for me i know that my boobs like whenever i gain weight my boobs grow as well so if i were to do fat transfer which i probably wouldn't even have enough fat to transfer but if i were to do that and i like ended up losing weight or something like they would just go down so i feel like fat transfer wouldn't really work for me sometimes they do i think a mixture of both so they do like implants and fat transfer but i feel like fat transfer for most people wouldn't really work but you would have to like really research that i haven't done my research on it because i just kind of knew i didn't want to do that so yeah i don't really know much about that but i'm pretty sure it's not 100 percent permanent how much did it cost i paid 5400 euros in total um, this is what the clinic I went to charges. Obviously, every clinic is going to be different. I would stay away from the cheaper ones because I think that when it comes to surgeries like this, you don't really want to try to go for a cheap one. I don't think that's ever a good thing. I feel like the average price is kind of like between like 
three and a half to like five and a half K maybe in the Netherlands from what I've kind of seen, like, or maybe even between four and four and like five and a half K, I think. If someone's charging like two or like two and a half K, I personally wouldn't really trust it. Um, and I know that it's like obviously really expensive and I would just say save up a bit longer and just get it somewhere done That's a bit more expensive that you know is actually good because you know within that price There's also the aftercare. There's obviously like the hospital stay and all of that You know I've heard stories of people getting it done for 2k and it I don't know I feel like it's a little sus now. I'm gonna go into the surgery day. Let me take a sip of coffee how long did the surgery take? Um, I'm not sure how long it exactly took, but the doctor told me it was going to take about an hour. And that's like just the surgery. Like obviously there's a lot of things that there's like prep beforehand and like afterwards when you get out, you're probably still knocked out and you're like sleeping. So, um, but I think the surgery itself takes about an hour. How did you feel the minute you woke up after surgery? I'm always very emotional when I um, when I wake up. I'm very used to my like waking up and have my mom next to my bed, but because of COVID, like everything's like very strict now, and like no one was allowed to be there. So I'm always very emotional. I was crying. I wasn't necessarily in a lot of pain, but I felt a lot of pressure. And I just remember like looking under my blanket and just looking at my boobs and being like, "Oh my God, what just happened?" And I was very drowsy still. I don't know exactly what he said, but I know one of the nurses was like, oh yes, go look girl. Like, don't be scared to look or something like that. And I was just like, looking at my boobs like, oh my God, what the fuck? And I called my mom. He let me call my mom right away, which was nice. But I'm always crying when I get, um, when I wake up from anesthesia. Pain scale from one to 10. So on the surgery day itself, it was probably like a five, like a four to five, because I, I feel like it wasn't as painful yet. It was just a lot of pressure. From that like night, like when I went to bed, that's when the swelling started, and that's when it was like probably like an eight. Like it was so, so bad. I was not expecting it, and I have a high pain tolerance. I can handle pain pretty well, but it was really, really bad, especially my left boob. The swelling was so bad like I felt like my boobs were gonna explode and like the morning after it was like an eight like I was definitely dying like I constantly cried because of the pain and I was like super like every time I tried to get up or do anything I was like really nauseous and dizzy did you have to take out your nipple piercings yes I took them out before I like went there um, and my doctor did say like when you get home you would be able to put them back in like I was allowed But my boobs were so swollen like there was no way I was gonna put them back in so I didn't do that And I'm pretty sure they're closed up now um, And I am planning on probably getting them re-pierced But it kind of depends on if my nipples are gonna be numb for a while Because if they're gonna like kind of if the sensitivity like stays gone for a bit Then I probably want get, to get it done in that time period because getting my nipples done was so painful to me like when I got them pierced so I kind of don't want to go through that again but I do really love nipple piercing so I feel like I will eventually get them done again what was being put to sleep and the pre-op process like so um I mean being put to sleep it's just like I don't know I'm quite used to it now like they just put it in my IV um and I got like a oxygen thing on my face what's that called and like you just fall asleep i don't know and you're just like sleeping and then you wake up it's it's i like it because it, everything just happens so fast like I, when i was like um they were prepping me and stuff they were like putting all these things on me and like my, my heartbeat checking my heartbeat and shit i was like i'm excited because i know it's gonna be fast for me like i'm literally just gonna go to sleep and wake up like it's like that but to them it's like a few hours but to you it's like this so i personally like it um it wasn't anything special like it was just kind of basic procedures i like i said i've had surgery before so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary they just kind of hook you up to some things and then they explain to you what's going to happen they check like your information they like, just to make sure everything is correct and then they just pop the fluid in and she asked me like my height and my weight and stuff so that they had like the perfect amount for me to go to sleep or whatever so yeah, that was kind of it. Did you get it under or above your muscles? I think they call it dual plane. So they put it half, like half under my muscle. Is that a proper way to say it? Because I don't really have much fat on my chest. They suggest to put it under the muscle so that you won't see the implant. 
Um, if you have a bit more fat on top, then you could totally put it um, on top of your muscle. And it'll also make the um, healing process a lot faster and easier because obviously putting it underneath the muscle means that the muscle also needs to heal and do all of that. So that's probably why I was in a lot more pain than some other people. Where is the incision? So my incision is underneath the boob. I didn't want to do nipple or armpit. Um, it's just underneath so as soon as it's healed and everything it'll kind of just like be in the fold which I think will be nice um, what else did I want to talk about I wanted to okay so now I want to talk about days after, after the surgery so um, first off I want to talk about when I went home if you can find a clinic that's not too far away from your house please do that because I had to drive home for like 70 minutes I think it took us 70 to like 75 minutes to drive home it was the worst thing ever. I was in so much pain. I cried the whole time. I was so nauseous. I ended up throwing up in the car. Luckily, I brought one of those baggies. Definitely bring something with you in case you have to throw up because um, obviously you've had a lot of painkillers, a lot of medicine, a lot of anesthesia, all that shit. And like sitting in the car with that pain and like everything happening, like i was like it was so bad so i ended up throwing up in the car and i was like crying i was in so much pain like turning corners is so painful it was so so bad so yeah i would suggest if you can find a place that's closer to your house definitely do that um and if not just make sure you you bring some things with you to make you more comfortable in the car and bring something in case you need to throw up what size am i now so i don't know what size i'm gonna be i think i'll probably be like a a D or like double D cup but it's really a lot of people ask me this and you choose a CC and 410 CC can be like a different cup size on someone else than on me if that makes sense like I'm short you know I'm very petite so this is probably gonna be a D or like a double D cup on me but it could be like a C cup on someone else so I don't know my exact size yet um, I will be talking about that in my update video in a couple months but I'm expecting to be like a D or double D cup and I was like a A, B. So I went up a couple, I went up a couple cups, girl, purr. <laughs> but yeah, now I got a lot of questions about like how the sizing works and it's basically different on everyone. Like it really depends on how tall you are, how, how like your measurements and everything. It's very different on everyone. But on me, this is probably gonna be like a D or double D. How long is the healing process? First two weeks, you have to really take it slow. Um, after six weeks, I'm allowed to start working out again. After about three months, you can see your actual like final results after they kind of drop. They don't actually drop, but they kind of just like settle and like, cause like now they're very swollen and tight. And then obviously after three months, that's all gonna go away. They're gonna kind of settle, be more in place. And it's kind of all gonna be a bit more natural looking. The bra, I have to wear four to six weeks. So I have my checkup in like two and a half weeks or something. And then my doctor will probably let me know when I can stop wearing the bra, but they suggest to wear it like for four to six weeks. So I'll probably wear it for the six weeks total, 24 seven, sleep in it and wear it all day. That was also a question. And someone asked me where I got it. These, this bra I just got from the hospital. They, they gave me this one and I also have it in white. If you're getting your boobs done, they will definitely provide you with these bras. Does it affect your mobility? Definitely, like your first, two to three days i really wasn't able to do much uh, i was basically just laying down all day and my mom had to do everything for me it was even really hard to like get up and move around or even sit up and you know you have to use your legs a lot i feel like i'm getting better at it now and also like you don't want to bend over i constantly am like doing squats basically like you want to bend your knees to grab something and sometimes you have to like hold them and um you will get used to it and you you'll know what you can and can't do because you will feel the muscle like if i try to grab something and i can't like i can feel the muscle pulling and it doesn't feel nice so i know what i can and can't do um so it does affect your mobility so i would suggest having someone with you at least the first few days to help you out my mom stayed with me from friday to sunday so on friday i went home and then she left sunday night i feel like maybe she could have stayed one more day because i feel like yesterday was still quite hard for me but i would say at least have someone with you the first few days if someone can stay with you for a week that would be perfect after a few days you will be able to move around a bit more and 
um, some of the paint will also settle a bit so you'll be able to kind of move around more and um, showering is really hard my mom helped me shower on Saturday which was really really hard I threw up right after because it was so painful as soon as you take off the bra especially the first few days it makes the pain 10 times worse because there's no more support there um, so I ended up throwing up because of the pain and then the day after I tried to shower myself which was just too much so I decided I was like okay when my mom leaves I'm not gonna shower I'm literally just gonna wash myself by the sink I would suggest just doing that for the first week it saves you a lot of pain and hassle and like I just feel like it's just not worth it like, and you can clean yourself by the sink like it's not a big deal this morning I did hop in the shower but I only kind of washed my lower body so i left my bra on and i just kind of washed my lower body that kind of worked for me as well you just kind of have to figure out what works for you you can also just sit on a chair in the shower and you can't really wash your hair that's like anything like above your head you can't really do also if you have like kitchen cabinets that are like really high you probably need like a step like a stool or like something to step on so you can grab things just little things like that but you will figure out ways to kind of make it work if that makes sense how is the scarring so as of right now i still have uh, my stitches and there's like some type of tape on there my right boob has a little bit of bruising but it hasn't gotten any worse so that's good i got a cream i'll put the name on the screen i got a cream that i'm going to be using once these stitches are dissolved and to kind of help with the scarring I don't know how it's gonna look or heal yet but i will let you guys know in the update video would you still be able to breastfeed yes i did talk about this with my doctor and he said that it should all be good obviously i won't know until i actually have kids but does it feel like natural boobs it just feels like yeah like it just feels soft i mean they're still so swollen now so it's kind of like a weird feeling i feel like they feel like natural boobs but they're just like very smooth are you scared of breast implant illness not really i mean i've done my research about it and i can understand why some people wouldn't get it done i'm just not really the type of person that gets scared by those things like i'm always just kind of like fuck it we'll just do it and see what happens is there a chance i might get it yes of course but i'm also just kind of like whatever we'll see like i'm really not the type of person to get worried about those things but obviously do your research and if you decide that that's too big of a risk for you don't get it done personally for me like i was just like i want them i want big titties anyway so if i'll die i'll die with big tits you know <laughs> do you feel any back pain are they heavy so i do have a bit of back pain but it's not because they're too heavy it's just because like everything's really uncomfortable sleeping is very weird like sometimes i'm sitting weird and it just kind of makes my back hurt they don't necessarily feel super heavy they just feel really tight right now did it affect your sternum tattoo so i think my sternum tattoo still looks really good i'm also not going to show you right now um maybe in the update video i'll show you what they look like with like a bikini on or something it didn't affect it too much like it did kind of stretch it out a little bit and it you can tell a bit more now that it's a bit crooked because it wasn't fully in the middle before which i knew or like centered you can tell a bit more now but like it doesn't really bother me i think it still looks really good and maybe i'll add something onto it i don't really know i'm just gonna wait until they're fully healed because i feel like right now they're still so swollen and like tight that i can't really judge what it's gonna look like yet so i'll update you guys on that in three months do you have to go back after a couple years to get them done again or is it permanent so they do suggest getting them um redone every 10 years which i'm totally planning on doing i know some doctors say you don't have to but i think that you should like after 10 years i definitely would want to get them redone um you know just to get a new implant in there i think that's just a good thing to do um because you know after 10 years a lot of things can happen and i also think probably after 10 years i might want a different size i might want to go bigger maybe i've had kids like a lot of things happen in 10 years you know so um definitely something to keep in mind if you're getting them done um especially if you feel like maybe you won't be able to pay out of pocket in 10 years 
maybe you have like an extra savings account where you'll save money so that in 10 years you can get them redone because you don't want to end up like not having the money to get them redone in 10 years and having all these risks you know so i would keep that in mind like it's definitely something you have to kind of upkeep every 10 years it's not like you're getting them done now and you're good for the rest of your life you know and i'm so young i'm 22 so i know that I still have a bunch of years, you know, that I'm gonna have to get them redone, which I'm personally fine with. How long until you can sleep on your stomach again? Um, I think, I think it just kind of depends on what feels most comfortable. Definitely the first six weeks, sleep on your back, and then just kind of figure out what's most comfortable because I know that it can be really uncomfortable to lay on them. Um, maybe get like one of those really long pillows so you can kind of sleep on your side. Do you have any feelings in your nipples? As of right now, no, they're like numb. They're very numb. They do like burn a little bit every now and then. Like I'll get like a random burning sensation in my nipples. Um, but besides that, they're pretty much numb at the moment. Can you still wear all your tops? Well, I haven't worn much like tops of mine. I've only really worn like hoodies and sweaters and stuff. I'm assuming I won't fit into a lot of them because most of my tops are in an extra small and you know i barely had any boobs so i feel like a lot of them are going to be too small or like end up being like really tight now but um i probably won't really be going through my tops until like month three because i kind of want them to be like fully healed and have my end results before going in and seeing like what do i have to get rid of but um i'm assuming i'm gonna get rid of a lot of tops are you scared your future partner might not like fake boobs um, it's not really something I think about. I don't really care. You know, I didn't get them done for anyone but myself and I feel like my future partner, like, if they don't like fake boobs, they're not even gonna be my future partner. Um, so I don't really care about that and I don't think anyone should care about it. If you, if that's something that's making you reconsider, please don't because who the fuck cares? If someone's gonna, like, not like you because you have fake boobs, they're like they don't have to be in your life anyways like that's fucking weird you know can you also just talk about like especially with men like i feel like um no never mind i'm not even <laughs> are you allowed to smoke while recovering i wouldn't recommend it it's not good um uh, it's not smart i've fully quit the cigarettes now i haven't smoked a cigarette since my surgery um those are probably the worst to smoke um, when you're recovering, I have smoked a little bit of weed, not every night though, like I honestly haven't even felt like it, and I've been taking so much medication anyways, like I didn't really feel like smoking weed. I have smoked a little bit of weed and it, um, I think I'm gonna start smoking it a bit more now that I'm pretty much out of all my like really heavy medication because it will help a little bit with also soothing with the pain and stuff like that. But I would suggest to just try to not smoke because it's obviously not good. But I think that for me personally, smoking a bit of like weed, it's just like pure weed, no nicotine or anything in there. I think that should be okay, but just not too much. Did you ever consider getting a BBL instead of only getting your boobs done? No, I don't think I'm going to get any other surgery on my body. Maybe after I have kids, I might do like a little mommy makeover or something if it's necessary. But no i bbls i've been talking about this a lot with people lately and bbls are just i hate that they're getting so popular because they're so dangerous like i think they're probably like one of the most dangerous plastic surgeries at the moment and um i mean bbl is more focused on like butt and like hips and stuff which i don't feel like i need like i quite like my body shape i naturally have like hips and a butt and stuff like that I don't have like the fattest ass ever, but if I were to eat a bit more and bulk a bit, I could get a fat fucking ass. So if I want one, I'll just get one in the gym. Um, I personally don't ever see myself getting a BBL. Like, so for me, it was just boobs was the only like plastic surgery I really wanted to get done on my body. And I don't think I'll get anything else done unless I'm like really old or if I'm like have like 20 kids and my body's like done for you know okay that is it guys i'm gonna <laughs> end the video here thank you for watching i hope this was kind of informative i will have a vlog up of my surgery day within the next couple days i was gonna get it up before this but i just haven't gotten around to editing it yet and i wanted to get this video out first so um i hope you guys enjoyed it make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe follow me on my instagram and i will be back in a few months to give you an update 
all my tatas and um we'll have like a better look at them i'll wear like a bikini top and show you and stuff right now they're just not ready for that and i'm not gonna even take them out of this bra because they need the support i love you guys and i'll see you in my next video